Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and move on to shaping the engines somewhat. So I'm going to go ahead and I had turned the symmetry off. Also, right, I made um, this spline here, which I don't remember why that exists. I'm going to get rid of that. Um, and then there is this other spline that we used previously to cut this. I don't need this anymore, so I can delete that as well. So I'm going to get rid of that, clean up my orientation. I might name the sphere R2D2. Um, oops, but I put <laughs> hats in there. R2D2, okay. Uh, and I may, um, let's see here, I may make this cube. I'm just going to rename this wing. And I'm going to rename this main cube um, X-wing. Okay. And I could say X-wing body, but I'm not worried about that right now. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the symmetry and look at our wings and our engines and figure out how we're going to make these work. So if I go back to this more recent three-quarter view reference that's got more detail, and if I look at the drawings as well, you'll see that, right, there's like a bigger cylinder part of the engine and then the smaller part, but they are connected and offset. And so there's a bunch of different ways I could model this. Um, there's also this inset here in the front surface. So let's take a look at how to um, deal with some of these shapes. Now there's certain details we're not going to worry about. I'm not going to worry about this edge detail here. Um, and I'm not going to worry about how broken this model is um, either. But we're going to try and get some of these starting to look accurate. So if I go back, um, one other thing I need to do is, right, I switched to this view. Um, so I need to go to my cameras. I need to go back to right. And then I need to come back over. Um, I need to go to view, go to configure, or hit shift V works as well, and select show picture again, right? So everything's good to go so I can look at my different views and see what's going on with this model. So if I come over here, right, you'll see I've got my engines more or less in the right spot, um, but they're a lot bigger and there's a lot of detail on here as well um, that I'm gonna need to add. And so, yeah, so as, as I said before, we're gonna work on the engines and then it'll be up to you to do the, um, uh, to do the, the blasters. Okay. So let's start with this engine. So to start with, what I would like to do is um, make sure I have enough geometry to do the things that I want to do, because I'm going to make these editable. And though I can subdivide objects after making them editable, it is much easier to work with this as a primitive to add more rotational or height segments. Um, based on where these segments are um, in this direction, I'm not going to add any additional height segments to my engines, and so I'm going to select the engine. Um, because if I go to my other views, specifically the top view, and zoom out a little bit, um, you can kind of see that it's where it's like really close to where that transition point takes place, right, is one of these lines. And so I'm kind of happy with that. So I'm going to leave it the way it is. Um, but I am going to be um, adding more rotational segments. So this is a smoother cylinder. So I've got my engine selected. I'm going to go to the object tab and I'm going to say rotation segments. I'm going to go ahead and set this to 32. All right, that's going to smooth things out a lot. Um, it does add a lot more geometry to this, um, which might be a pain in the butt, but most of what we're going to be doing is using the loop selection tool and the ring selection tool to select things. And so we aren't going to have, it's not going to be too cumbersome. Uh, again, when we start working on things like this, we need to think about order of operation. So I could in cut this all out of one piece, but what I would rather do is actually maybe have just a a, a couple um, a couple of rectangles that right rectangular solids that go across here and here make my life easier and not worry about um, <laughs> doing some crazy cuts on polygons that look like this. So, um, so what I am going to do though, is I do want some more cap segments because what I'd like is to have one that stays at the surface. I'd like to be able to push back a little bit for the second one. And then, um, 
what I may also do is push way back for this other one. Now there's a lot of detail and things in here. This is something we're not going to worry about modeling. Um, however, if you wanted to lathe something, you could use the, lathe, the spline and lathe tool to make something that would look like that that wrap around with the ridges on it um, without too much difficulty. And that would be a good way to test your skills um, as you go further. Okay, so I'm gonna say I've got enough polygons here on my engine. I'm gonna hit the letter C with it selected to make it editable. You'll notice it becomes a polygon object and suddenly I can manipulate polygons. And I just realized I forgot to do the thing I was talking about doing. So I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna undo that. And I'm going to go to my caps and under caps for this, there is the segments um, here as well. And how many did I say we needed? Let's see here. One, two, and then I'm just going to push all the way back. May, let's say one, two, three. We'll need four segments plus a little bit for the edge thickness here. But we can do the edge thickness. Um, yeah, we'll just do, yeah, we'll do, we'll do five segments. Um, let's go ahead and do five. So I'm going to say five. And you can see those are all uniformly set up there on the surface. That's fantastic. I'm going to hit the letter C. Something that's really nice with um, what Cinema has done recently is back in the not too distant fat past, cylinders, the caps on cylinders were not connected to the bodies and you had to do extra steps to do that. But now by default, they're connected and it's wonderful. Okay, so to start with, what I need to do is I need to do several step, steps of um, of uh, extrusion. And I want to show you um, kind of what's going to happen. So we're going to go ahead and use the loop selection tool, right? And so this is loop selection here. Um, if it's not showing up and ring selection showing up or fong break selection showing up, uh, just make sure to select it. You can also, all of the select tools are available by hitting the letter U. And then those are all um, well, there's some UV stuff in there too, but basically there's just a boatload of selection tools available um, as part of that. Because UL is loop selection, there's path selection, and some other selecting things. And there's also some other manipulation tools for manipulating um, meshes. But we're not going to worry about that right now. So I'm going to go ahead and say, well, I don't, I know this I want to keep at the top level. Um, so let's go ahead and select these next rings. Now, something to note with um, the um, extrude tool. If I have, the, say, this ring selected and I inset this sum and I'm like, okay, great, I'm happy with that. And then I hit space bar, go back to my loop selection, go to the next one, hit D and push this in. You'll see that I'm getting this edge of polygons, right? And that's something that I would prefer not to have happen. So I'm going to undo that. And I'm going to undo my other step. However, if I was to use my loop selection tool to select everything that I want to push in and then use the letter D and push right this in, say, about, I don't know how far I want to go in with that next ring, probably there. And then I was to step out. Um, and just select these two rings, right? And use the letter D and push this back. You'll see that I don't get those additional polygons, right? So, um, and I'm just doing this like a stair-stepped thing. It's not, you know, super accurate, but the idea here is to show you these tools and how to use them effectively. And so then I can push this back, right, even further. And so now I've got those steps pushed back. Now something else, right, the edge of this engine compartment is not quite that thick, right? It's a little bit thinner. So I'm going to go ahead and loop select this outer ring. And then when I do that, um, I should be able to use the slide tool. And actually, I don't want to have all this. I want to select the inside um, edges. So I'm going to go to edges mode. I'm still going to use loop selection, but I'm going to select this. I'm going to hit the letter T, and I should be able to scale this in or out, right? And so you can see I'm scaling this out. It actually flares the inside edge, which kind of looks nice. Um, if I wanted to round the outside edge, um, there's some other ways I can do that, and we'll talk about that in a second. Um, and then 
so I can do something similar, right, with these steps inside of here. So I could say UL, I could actually, oops, wrong. <laughs> there we go. I could select this. Um, if I hit T again, so I can scale, right, I could pull this up and I can start to make these shapes um, a little bit less um, hard. Something else, a tool we haven't talked about is the bevel tool. So if I say UL and let's select this ring here, I'm gonna zoom in a touch. And the bevel tool is this tool right over here. It looks like the extrude tool except it tapers in. If I go ahead and click, select this and click and drag, you'll see that it is applying a bevel um, to this edge. And by default, it's gonna have three subdivisions. The depth's 100%. We're not gonna worry about some of these other things right now. Um, and so, uh, but what I would like to do is, um, there's other different profiles we can do as well. Um, the user profile is kind of crazy. That's not what we want at all. Um, just profile, right? It actually allows you to use a spline to create that profile. There's a lot of different options here. Um, and you'll see when I do, if I have round selected, I have all this different topology that I can use. I can say uniform, radial, patch. None of these are going to make any changes. Um, and I'm going to see if I if any of these other switches will do anything. Um, if I adjust the tension, that's going to either make it flip inside out and do crazy things, or it'll adjust the type of curve, right? This way it's rounded out, this way it's more concave. So I have a lot of control this way as well. I want this to be reasonably um, flat. And the default settings are so much nicer now than they used to be. Um, they used to be, you know, pretty terrible. Um, so I can bevel things like that, right? And so you can take some time and you can do a little bit of um, experimentation with how you want to set this up in yours. I'm just, right, I'm kind of creating this flare in here and making this thing seem more rounded, right? There's a lot of um, ways I can do some simple adjustments that make a big visual difference. And you'll note there's bevel, there's a little bit of bevel on all of these different steps. Um, I've already made a few mistakes in terms of how that looks, but you know what, I'm not that worried about it. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this and to um, the quick key for the bevel tool, I always forget it's M, it's MS. So I can hit M and then S on the keyboard if I need to. Um, so I've selected that edge and I am going to try not to select anything else. I'm just gonna click in space and try and throw some bevel on this as well, just a little bit though, right? And the reason I'm beveling this just a little bit, and it's something that as we go to modeling makes a big difference. If you have a little bit of rounding on edges, um, this is and this is a step like when you're done with a model like you don't want to do this early you want to do this late um, but if I was to go ahead and loop select this as well and um, hit M S to bevel it and click and drag what that does is when we go to render this and again I'm just doing like a little tiny bit there but what this does is it allows this other surface that the light hits and it's gonna make it look much more rigid and three-dimensional than if it's a hard corner, right? We talked about this before. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the big, with the front of this engine as it currently stands. It looks moderately okay. <laughs> um, I may go ahead and add these details, but that's something you could potentially do too, those cross pieces. Um, and just one thing to note is if you're making them, like if I make this huge cube, and I'm gonna to have to scale it way down. I'll do one of them so we can look through some of this. And I'm gonna to go to model mode, right? Cause I can't manipulate it unless I'm in model mode. And I'm gonna hit the letter E. Um, so I have my axis up and I'm just gonna do the horizontal piece. So I've got this thing about the right thickness. Obviously it's really huge still. So I'm gonna shrink this down. Um, and I don't know how you know, long, wide it needs to be, but I need to move this so it's in front of that engine. So I'm gonna to go to my different views and I'm gonna use this view to pull it to where I want, which is right up about there. And then in this view, I could probably drag it over a little bit 
And you'll see here, right, if you remember, we're actually looking at the back of the X-wing in this view. Um, and for some reason, the wings are offset. Oh, probably because the um, because I, I made all those adjustments to the model, and I forgot to adjust with the position of the wings. Um, so in order to get these aligned again, which I don't think is really that important at this point, but they are like hanging out from the body pretty far. Um, if I go to my symmetry, I want to make sure that I'm not moving all three of these things right independently of one another. If I hold down shift, I can select all three and then I can um, go ahead and move this whole wing in and it should manipulate all of them. And you'll see that those lower wings now are like a little bit off, um, but you know what? I don't think it really matters because it's a science fiction spaceship. If the wings are off a little bit, nobody's gonna really care. Now you'll notice, right, I still do have some gaps and it's something where what we may do is a little bit later we might um, pull those bottom wings in a little bit closer um, as a separate object and we'll look at how to do that when we get there. But let's get these details done first. Okay, so I've got this thing reasonably close to where I want it, um, kind of. Uh, and so I'm gonna go ahead and grab this cube. Again, it's obviously really too long, so I'm gonna shrink that down until it's a little bit closer in size. I'm gonna to try to align, oops, I'm going to select it again. I'm going to try to align this somewhere in there. And let's see if I go into this view, if I can see things a little bit better. Yes, I can. So I'm gonna come over here, right? It's more or less centered on my engine. I'm gonna shrink this down until it intersects those walls. I'm going to zoom in here now so I can see where exactly this thing is. I'm gonna pull it forward a bit, oops. And then I also do need to shrink it in this dimension still some more because it's a little bit too thick. And I don't know what these end dimensions are. And then you can see it's sticking through the sides a touch. That might be a detail you want. Um, in my case, I'm just gonna tuck it in a little bit more. And then it's a little bit above center, so I'm just gonna pull it down until it is more or less centered. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it's there. Okay, and I'm going to call this cube engine cross piece. Or just engine cross, because I don't want any more letters in there. And what I'm gonna do is, so I've talked about this before, but you can make any object a child of any other object. So because I know that this engine cross piece, I always want to move with the engine model, I don't want it to be independent, I can drag this down and make this a child of my engine. Right, so then if I was to select my engine and drag it around, right, or scale it or something else or rotate it, it's all gonna move together. It's a really handy way of working. Okay, so I do have that one cross piece. And again, right, it would be awesome to have bevels on here. So the way you do bevels on a uh, primitive is you just check mark fillet. And obviously this is <laughs> a little bit too much. Uh, we don't need one centimeter. I need like, let's try one tenth of a centimeter, 0 0.1. And that will give me like a little tiny bit of an edge. It's probably too little. I'm gonna go ahead and 0 0.3 and see what that's like. Perfect, I think that should work really, really nicely. And I'm gonna go ahead and leave that like that. This is a great time to save it. We've done a lot of work. And so let's go ahead and look at the back of the engine now. So now for the back part of the engine, I am going to need to shrink all, oops, I'm going to need to shrink all of these down and then offset them. And so to start with, I want to, um, I know I need to shrink these two sets down, but I know that like if I start shrinking these, right, this edge is going to taper in as well. And I don't want that to ha I'd like to not have to deal with trying to realign this. I want this all to be the same diameter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and select my engine itself. I'm going to go to edges mode. I'm going to go hit UL to do a loop selection. I'm going to loop selection that edge, and then I'm going to use our friend the slide tool down here, right? Or, it, and notice it's M-O, so I could hit M and then O on the keyboard quickly. 
And I'm going to hold down control so I can copy this edge. And I'm just going to pull this back just a little tiny bit because this transitions pretty quick. All right. And so what I've done is I've just created another right set of subdivisions. And now I have these two that I can shrink and I get, I have, a, and this stays put. So I don't have to deal with fixing that a little bit later. So now I'm going to go to polygons mode. I'm going to use my loop selection so I can hit UL on the keyboard. I'm going to select this. I'm going to hold down shift, select this. I'm going to rotate my view so I can kind of see what I'm doing here. And I'm going to go ahead and hit T and I'm going to start tapering this in. Now I'm doing this without right looking at things. And what's interesting to me is that for some reason, this cap is not behaving the way I would like it to. So the reason for this is, right, I didn't select these end polygons. And so they are not scaling with the rest of the shape. So I'm going to undo that, right? And this is a pretty simple fix. I'm just going to hit UL. And um, so UL isn't actually my best option. What I could do is I can go to this Fong break selection. And what a Fong break is, right, Fong is this tag over here. And, um, and what Fong, remember, it allows things to be more or less faceted, right? So if I was to set this to zero, this would be, you can see um, every single edge there, right? And if I set it to 40 again, Right, it's a little bit smoother. So what a Fong break selection does is it finds the edge or a position where there's more than the number of degrees here to indicate this is a hard corner. And it allow and it already lets me like it puts that purple circle around there. And now I know I can do this and select this. If I rotate around to the front of the engine, you'll see there's a lot more Fong break selections, right? And what's really nice about this is it allows me to really select like a whole surface and manipulate it at once rather than trying to manually select multiple rings or whatever. So if I hold down shift, then I can add this to my selection. And now if I scale this, right, everything should scale like I want it to scale. And I don't know how big these are supposed to be, so I'm going to go ahead and look at um, this view here, because this is going to be my best bet. It looks like I'm pretty close. I might want to taper it down just a touch more. And then I need to move it a little bit to one side. So I'm going to hit the letter E. I'm going to scoot it over a touch. And you can't really see it in this you know, view. But if I go to this other reference here, you can see these are offset pretty dramatically from one another. And so I'm going to go ahead and um, if I look at this view, you can see they're kind of on the inside. Although it looks a little different on this model. Um, but maybe if I just pull lift this up here, here we go. All right. And so now I'm going to go ahead and look at my front view. And you can see that I've got that little bit of a section there. Um, you know, depending on, you know, you can make these any direction you want them to be. Um, but we've got pretty solid looking engines now. Um, and you can see like at the end, there's some tapering that happens, right? There's, um, this cap is gonna get inset. So let's go ahead and um, maybe push this in a bit to make, um, right, to make this engine work. And then we've got a couple more changes I want to make, but let's go ahead and do this. So we're going to, we're, in this case, we'll do UL. We're going to select, and I haven't looked at the engine of these. I don't, I'm just going to push everything back right now. If we need to pull something forward, we could, but I'm going to pull all, push all of these in. So I'm going to hit the letter D on the keyboard, right, to do my extrude. And I'm going to click and drag and push this you know, back a ways into the engine. And right. so now um, I've got that cavity there. Um, and there's some other things that need to happen here. There's some other detail. Um, you can see there's like a little bit of a lumpiness there. And 
than a taper and these things look like trash because this is like an old model but that's all right so i'm going to say um, i'm going to use my loop cut tool so i'm going to hit kl i'm going to come over here and i'm going to say this is about where this chunk of ring that's a little bit thicker is and so i've got my two cuts there i just clicked twice i'm going to hit escape i'm going to um, then use my loop selection tool and select these hit the letter d click and drag a little bit to make a little bit more detail there. And then, right, this tapers a bit. And so I don't really want to taper the inside edge, but I'd like to taper the outside edge closer to the inside edge. So since it's an edge operation, I don't want to use polygons. I want to use edges and I want to use my loop selection. So I'm in edges mode, loop selection, select this, hit the letter T and uniformly scale this along the X and Y axis here and just taper this down a little bit. Okay, so now I've got, you know, pretty quickly an engine that looks a lot more like an X-Wing engine than it did a few minutes ago. Um, again, if I was, you know, at the finish point with all of this and I wasn't going to add a whole lot more detail, what I might do is select these two edges and use the bevel tool again. So I'm going to grab my bevel tool, click and drag a touch, and just bevel those corners just a little bit so that... Um, Right, so that this model is going to look a lot better when I render it. And I'm going to do just a quick little test render here so you can kind of see um, how this works. Now it's doing this in um, Redshift by default, which is why it looks the way it looks. And it's kind of hard to see, but you can, but these do feel like they actually have volume, which is nice. Whereas these edges here look pretty fake, right? Because they're very, very flat. So something else we need to do, um, another detail you all can add is this is raised too high up or these are too low, but this should be, f f this should, this edge should be level with these other two. And then you could use um, the spline cut tool to take a spline and either cut an inset or you could select this, use the inset tool to create those edges and then push down into the surface. So there's a lot of different ways you could, you could do that detail. Um, but the other parts that I would like you to add detail to on your own to test out are, right, obviously <laughs> the blasters need some love. And then uh, the wing, there's some other details. I wouldn't be too worried about, oops, about anything that's like, you know, crazy detailed in here. You don't need all of this unless you really want to experiment with doing some of that. Um, but there are these like, right, the wing kind of slopes up and thickens up as it gets close to the engine. Um, and you might experiment with even doing smaller selection areas or using the spline cut tool to like pull up some other little details and things like that. Or maybe do some of these insets and just kind of push into the wing. Um, again, not worried about much of this like fine detail in here at this point. Um, but you can start to see right, how long it can take to accurately model something. Um, I did, I had mentioned that if we wanted to, um, if you wanted to see how to do some of these little inset edges, we could take a look at that. Um, so let's go ahead and see if there's like a, a simple way to do some of that. Honestly, those panel details are much better done as a texture. Um, and so maybe we'll save that for that. I think one of the things I've done in the past is this is sort of done when we're done with this tutorial, but I think what we'll do is I'll finish up the model to a certain point. And then um, when we go into UV unwrapping, we're going to use this as an example because it's a pretty complex object and it'll give us a really good way to think about how to get paint in these different places, how to get this texture on here. Um, because there's a lot of detail that can be added through um, something called displacement or through bump or normal maps. And so we're going to look at how to accomplish some of those things. Um, but that's for a much later tutorial in the class. Okay, so we are basically done with the tutorial. Um, I, as again, I just want those of you in the class, or even if you're taking this on, if you're just watching this online, um, go ahead and experiment with these tools, add some more detail, test your skills, build, you know, connect these wings to the bottom of the, <laughs> to the bottom of the aircraft. That is something I should note. Um, if we make the symmetry editable, we should, you should have two sets of objects, 
two like two top wings and two bottom wings and so those bottom wings can be um uh can then be pushed into the body um separate of the top wings right right now they're all connected because basically there's one wing that we're just duplicating four times okay so we've done a lot of uv mo <laughs> of polygon modeling and um, I'm excited to see the outcome of your X-Wings.